safety. It's a big thing in the workshop. If you don't feel safe doing something or you just don't feel comfortable, don't do it. You're the only person who can keep you safe. And if you don't do it, no one else can. Okay, let's just check if we don't remember if I tighten this up correctly or not. It's one of those foreign ones where you tighten it to loosen it and loosen it to tighten it. Comes from Australia or somewhere, I think. Probably true enough. Yeah, Yogi, probably good enough. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to talk a little bit about common tools that we all have and use and love. And for, for a square piece of wood, the, the most normal way of doing it is to use a roughing gouge. And I will be good here and put my face shield on. Because I find the most likely time that you're going to bring up a chip and it's going to fly off is when it's square, you know, square corners. Blind me good there. <laughs> you wanted some challenge, didn't you? Yeah, you can see it be turning it on and off. Yeah, it's stroboscopic, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe here it'll be. If you want, I don't well, know. Well, oh, is it? That'd be in the way. Yes, yes, you're right. No, no, you're, you've got yeah. the best idea, I think. Not much, but it's not somber. much. Yeah. Is that clear of yeah. cameras, etc.? Yeah, that's good. We'll okay. Sure, that way, and we can give it more room. That uh, the roughing gouge is the sort of accepted best tool for doing that, for knocking off the corners. You didn't have one? Oh dear. But you had a skew. You can use the skew as well. Do the same job, just a peeling cut. <laughs> if you didn't have a skew and you didn't have a um, roughing gouge, you might have a ball gouge. So the point I'm making really is the wood doesn't know the difference, it doesn't know the name of the gouge. All it knows is that piece of steel that comes up against the wood and the, the, the angle that the steel is in relation to the wood. That's all it knows. Some of you may have heard of Alan Lacer. Everybody here know Alan Lacer or heard of the name? And Diane's personal friends with him and she can give you his telephone number or whatever. <laughs> uh, Alan is, I think, acknowledged by most as the master of the skew. His skew doesn't look quite like mine. His skew is hollow ground. Mine is not. Mine's ground the opposite way. Alan doesn't give an angle when he when he talks about how to sharpen a skew. He doesn't tell you what angle to sharpen it. He, his recommendation is that it's one and a half times the width of your skew long. Okay, so whatever width it is, doesn't matter what width it is, he wants to be one and a half inches, one and a half times that thickness down here. So what does that mean? Well, I, of course, I had to find out. And what I found out was that basically, 
good old drive side again. Depending on whether you have an 8 inch wheel that you're shambling on or a 6 inch wheel, you're going to have a smaller radius in here when you sharpen it. And the angle is going to be different. In one case it's going to be 25 degrees down here on the point, in the other case 27. So it's quite a difference. The next thing Alan says is that he always hones it. He takes a hone, um, a diamond hone, for example, and he will hone from point to point. And thus he'll put a, a flat surface on the point and the flat surface here. So he, he never uses the skew straight off the grinder, he always hones it. So what happens when he hones it, we find out, is that that angle that he started out with comes back to about 37 degrees, no matter what wheel he sharpened it on. So 37 degrees is Alan's angle. Now, that's what the wood saw when I held the skew against it. It's got a point there, 37 degrees. I'm rubbing the bevel on one side, that's all it sees, 37 degrees. But what did the wood see when I put this on it? Well, if we take our handy dandy protractor, protractor and we put it on it like that, we find 37 and a half degrees. Not very much different than the 37. So what did the wood see when it saw this? 37 degrees. Or oh, 37 and a half. So that's all it sees. It doesn't see any different. Um, there's another gentleman that you've probably heard of. He has passed, I believe now. Alan Batty. Alan Batty who is another master of the skew and all turning tools, um, has a video on craft supply in which he talks about the skew and how to sharpen it. And he says that about average 40 degrees. But if the wood is softer, then it can be sharper. And if the wood is harder, it can be blunter. So middle of the road, 40 degrees. So 40 degrees to 37, not very big difference, uh, very small. So you've got Alan Batty saying 40, you've got uh, Alan Laser. Is it Alan Laser? Mm -hmm. Yeah, saying 37. <clears throat> There's another gentleman out there, Stuart Batty. Stuart Batty is Alan Batty's son served his apprenticeship in his father's workshop, and is a fantastic turner. He has a whole series of videos out there, 37 of them, I think, which are free. You can look at them, download them, study them. On the question of the bowl gouge, he goes for four, what he calls a 40-40 grind. So we've got 40 degrees here, we've got 40 degrees here, and got 40 degrees. We took our trusty little protractor and we could get it on there, on the edge here. If you think of a bowl gouge like a scraper, a scraper is flat, right? And if you were to curl that scraper up, you have a bowl gouge. And uh, another fellow I mentioned in a minute is um, Myron Curtis, says, he was the first one I heard, if you think of it, a scraper is nothing more than a bowl gouge flattened down. It's the same as a bowl gouge. So if you took a scraper and you sharpened it to 30 or 40 degrees, as he says, and then you curled it up, that's what you have, 40 degrees in all directions. So what did this wood see? 40 degrees. 40, 37, not much in it. What, what I, I conclude from that that there seems to be a sweet spot around 37 and a half degrees I found because I arrived at 37 and a half degrees by trial and error 
when I was making this little gown here that um, a few of you have seen before and I called it a brush gown because I first made this gown uh, Myron Curtis and we now have his video in our DVDs uh, very hard to find videos by Myron Curtis I found it in the AAW and they don't have them very often but we have one now and uh, he taught a lot of people to turn, taught a lot of students to turn. And uh, one of the first things he would do with the students is they would make this gout. He would take a piece of square tool steel, probably a little bit smaller than this one, and they would grind up a gout. Now, the gouts that he would grind up would probably more, be more, and you can tell I've been experimenting, more like this one more 50 degrees, 45 degrees angle on the bottom. And that's the gouge he would teach them to use, first of all. First thing they do is turn a handle for it, just holding the gouge and they turn a the handle. So I, having seen his, uh, an article about him actually, a write-up about him, uh, by a wood club that he used to do demos in, I, I read the write-up and I thought, that's interesting. <laughs> wonder how that would work and I started experimenting making a gouge like he had and so I ended up at 37 and a half degrees included angle at the point 37 and a half 37 40 or it's all around the same angle we're hitting the same angle Wood didn't know any difference, it's all 37 and a half degrees. And that finish is not too bad, I just leave it there. So that was one of the little things I wanted to talk about the tools, just to kind of stir up some thought and let you understand where I came from to end up with that angle. 